welcome back to my channel my name is victoria thank you so much for being here um so yeah let's get started on this wes anderson and his color palette video so if you haven't subscribed already it would mean the world to me um a lot of thought <laughs> went into this video so i would really appreciate it if you joined the fam um so yeah let's just get into uh this video so i'm gonna be talking about the color palette in three of wes anderson's films the royal tenenbaums moonrise kingdom and the grand budapest hotel so the color palette of these films is not only beautiful but they give important insight into the themes and the characters of Wes Anderson's films. So without further ado, let's just get started. So I just want to say that Wes Anderson has a really clear and unique perspective when it comes to his overall like production design. Um, we enter into the world that is Wes Anderson and we feel like we've encountered a microcosmic dollhouse um i'll put some clips in here so you can see exactly what i'm talking about um these worlds are filled with unique colors and unique characters and unique stories and plots as well and they're all of course rich with color his production design and costumes develop his stories and his characters' personalities, and they develop as much as the character. Wes Anderson gravitates towards primary colors, um, so that is yellow, blue, and red. Green is a secondary color, so yellow and blue make green. Saturation is very present um, in his films, and he uses a wide variety of saturation, so between low saturation desaturated colors to really intense high saturation saturation refers to the intensity of color which he utilizes in every aspect usually uses a high saturation to really pop on camera His work is always super bright and colorful even if the subject matter is quite dark so yeah Let's get in, let's step into or wheel into the world of Wes Anderson. So I'm going to start off with the Royal Tenenbaums. So Royal Tenenbaum and his wife have three children, Chaz, Margo, and Richie. All three children were prodigies growing up, however, as they became adults, all the kids succumbed to failure. 22 years after getting separated and moving out, Royal is now broken homeless and is faking terminal stomach cancer to win back the love and affection of his family. So they all come back to congregate at their house to really reconcile their differences and to confront their father and their kind of tumultuous childhood. Color palette is one of the easiest ways to depict characters. It is really central in detailing to us, the audience, what that character is all about. We're gonna start off with Margot. Her outfit and hair choice don't evolve as she gets older. She has this really kind of, not mousy, but really kind of to do blonde bob and she wears this cute also a brown fur coat so she hasn't changed her hair since she was a child so this says a lot about who she is as a character um wes anderson shows that she doesn't evolve much throughout her life she is always shown with an ankle length ankle length fur coat that is almost the same color as her skin tone and her hair, which washes her out. Fur is often associated with opulence and contrasts against her childlike appearance. Monochromatic colors are all, are all the colors of a single hue. Monochromatic color schemes are derived from a single base hue and extended using its shades, tones, and tints. 
Brown is a natural color that evokes a sense of strength and reliability. It's often seen as solid, much like earth, and it's a co color often associated with resilience, dependability, security, and safety. Brown can also create feelings of loneliness, sadness, and isolation. In large quantities, it can seem vast, dark, and empty, like an enormous desert devoid of life. Brown brings to mind feelings of warmth, comfort, and security. It out for brown can also be sophisticated. So Richie is a fallen tennis star, and he still wears aspects of his tennis career. Stripes of black and red and white create a visual vibration for us viewing it. It optically vibrates um, and mimics the movement back and forth, almost like a tennis player. This costume also reminds me of Piet Mondrian's um, grid-like paintings consisting of red, black, yellow, and blue. The blue scene of him shaving his hair and beard shows a dark turn for Richie. Um, blue is often associated with sadness and depression, um, also isolation. It is a stark turn from the rest of the film, which is usually shot in oranges and yellows and reds and just in brown tones as well. And so showing Richie like this, um, it really kind of harkens back to art history where we think about Picasso's blue period. Um, so Chaz wears a fire engine red tracksuit that details his neurotic behavior. Um, red being the color of blood and rage, and also really kind of illustrating um, his huge trauma that um, he really kind of encountered when his wife passed away unexpectedly in a plane crash. Um, so he's really dealing with a lot and the color red really kind of exploits that anxiety for uh, us, the viewer. Um, it's a direct kind of tie that we can tell that, you know, Chaz wears a fire engine red tracksuit, um, and it's a prominent color associated with deep pain. Red has been a part of our palette since the very beginning of human history. Ochre, a naturally occurring pigment that is a source of earthy shades of brown, orange, and yellow. In 1817, our German chemist uncovered a new element, cadmium, which became the foundation of new shades of yellow and orange paint. But it wasn't until 1910 that cadmium red was available as a commercial product, offering an alternative to the traditional vermilion. Henry Matisse was the first major champion of this new pigment, and also his friend Renoir. The children, royal and mom's children, are not meant to succeed. So the next one I'm going to be talking about is Moonrise Kingdom. So Moonrise Kingdom is, is set on an island, um, like a camp, um, off the coast of New England, um, called New Panzans. And it's set in 1965. And the two main characters are 12-year-old campers, Susie and Sam. So they have fallen in love with each other and mean. decide to run away. Sam is an orphan and Susie is kind of dealing with a lot of childhood trauma um, from her parents separating and their impending divorce. Um, Susie is described as a troubled child who's who is prone to aggressive behavior. Color psychology suggests that different colors can have an impact on our moods, feelings, and even behaviors. The color pink, for example, is thought to be a calming color associated with love, kindness, and femininity. Many people immediately associate the color with all things feminine and girly. Sam wears yellow, and yellow is used to represent youth, and whimsy and a lot of Wes Anderson's films and you can see that a lot throughout the film. We also see Susie wearing yellow and this is supposed to be a sign of her growth. She has kind of changed from pink um, to yellow at the end of the film which is really significant. Yellow is used to represent their love and is really representative of the time that they spent together at camp. 
Vincent van Gogh famously said, how wonderful yellow is. It stands for the sun. The color yellow can be bright and intense, which is perhaps why it can often invoke such strong feelings. Yellow can quickly grab attention, but it can also be abrasive when overused. Many important objects in this movie are yellow, like Sam's yellow tent, as well as the different uniforms that the campers wear. And then again, of course, yellow Susie dress at the end. Blue in contrast is used in this film um, to really, again, represent sadness or pain in a lot of Wes Anderson's films back to Picasso's blue period. This is really just to represent with color um, the progression of the story and a really tough time. So again, social services um, in the film is wearing blue. Um, this is again a sign to represent that she is the villain in this, uh, in this case. Much of the film has a muted yellow saturation, um, so a low saturation. All of the colors are meant to give it a big kind of nostalgic feel. It's all very hazy. Um, and another movie that has a lot of kind of nostalgia built into the themes and also in the representation of the film is the Grand Budapest Hotel. So in the Grand Budapest Hotel, we are exposed to a ton of color in this film. Um, I think Wes Anderson really did a beautiful job. I think all of his work up until the Grand Budapest Hotel is really just a signifier of how much of a color um, colorist, you know, he really truly is at heart. Um, it contains a ton of colors and it's really a way that Wes Anderson has allowed these colors to really shift the reality. It contains an assortment of red, yellow, pink, and blue. Um, blue again being really significant in this film as well as purple. The Grand Budapest Hotel is a luxury European ski resort for the rich. The film is set in the 1930s, um, headed by Monsieur Gustave. He is a hotel concierge, and Zero, a junior lobby boy, quickly becomes his protege. Gustave is a valiant leader, often taking on lovers, um, which are older women as well, older women um, hotel guests. One of his lovers dies, Miss Dowager Countess. She is found dead, and Monsieur Gustave is framed for her murder. Most of the movie is consistent of a flashback. Um, that's, again, where we have this really desaturated color palette and this really beautiful haziness um, that is associated with the film and a lot of Wes Anderson's film. A lot of the colors are turned down into pastels. That's where we get really beautiful washes of color, pinks, and blues. Gustav wears a purple tailcoat and Zero also wears a matching purple tailcoat. This is again like Wes Anderson does in a lot of his films to connect the two characters so we immediately link um, Monsieur Gustav and Zero as having a really close relationship because they are wearing the same color. Purple has often been associated with luxury um, through royal portraits and it was a tough color to make because the pigment was so expensive and hard to get. So a lot of these pigments um, you would see a lot of royals and people of astute wealth um, paying a lot of money to have purple garments and purple just in general. Even the paint um, was a sign of wealth. So that again talks about how luxurious this hotel is. So purple is a color intermediate between the blue and red. According to surveys in Europe and the US, purple is the color most often associated with royalty, magic, and mystery. So we see that a lot in this film where again there's a beautiful love story unfolding um, between two of the characters. The colors in this film really allude to a more kind of prestigious pre-war Europe, um, one that was a lot more indulgent 
um, I say that in the terms of colors and and um, when I think of indulgent, I think of Marie Antoinette and Sophia Coppola's representation of that. Just really soft and pastel, almost like um, a really decadent dessert. So again, we see this when this beautiful pastel color palette is again linked to the story's progression of Monsieur Gustave being arrested. Um, and then it takes on this really dark blue um, tone, um, very different from the previous color palette where it's a lot of pastels. This becomes um, where he is uh, arrested and going into uh, where the story progresses to the war. Um, it becomes this really dark period for all of the characters and again that's represented in the colors. So dark blue. So to wrap this up, Wes Anderson is so great at using really soft pastels, really really colorful color palettes um, to really talk about kind of dark subject matter and I really love the contrast. Obviously, a lot of other people do as well. Um, I think that's why that's what makes him such a successful um, film director and really kind of visionary in a sense of film. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I super appreciate it. Um, yeah, and if you like more of this video, this type of video, I would love for you to subscribe. Um, like down below, comment um, on what you thought of my interpretation of all of these colors and the way that Wes Anderson uses colors. Um, so yeah, if you have any suggestions on what you might want to see next, um, yeah, just leave it in the comments below and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, bye.